All right, you get the second half of this section, be my comfy clothes. So here we go. Thought I'd come by to see how the sick man was doing. How'd you guess, ask uh, Montag? Betty smiled. His smile, which showed the candy pinkness of his gums and the tiny candy whiteness of his teeth. I've seen it all. You're going to ask for the night off, right? Okay, so we're coming up here on number six. Uh, in your own words, describe what happened, what led to the book burning. So here it comes pretty shortly. Montag sat and begged. Well, said Beatty, take the night off. He examined his external match box and the lid of which said guaranteed one million lights in this igniter and began to strike its chemical match abstractly. In other words, lighter match blowing it out every time. He looked at the flame, he blew. He looked at the smoke. When will you be well, he asked. Tomorrow, maybe the next, maybe the first of the week, said Montag. Beatty puffed his pipe. Every fireman sooner or later hits this. They only need to understand how the wheel turns. Need to know the history of our profession. They don't feed it to our rookies like they used to. Damn shame. Puff. Only the fire chiefs remember it now. Puff. I'll let you in on it. This is just like, even with my profession, I had to learn the history of education. He should have learned the history of firemen. Beatty took a full minute to settle himself and think back to what he wanted to say. When he did it all, when did it all start, you ask, this job of ours? How did it re come out? Where, when, well? I'd say it really got started around this thing called the Civil War. Let's think about that. Did we actually start burning books around the Civil War? Even though our rule book claims it was founded earlier. In fact, as we didn't get along, the fact is we didn't get along until photography came into its own, then motion pictures in the early 20th century. Radio, television, things began to have mass or quality. Montag sat in bed, not moving. And because they had mass, they became simpler, said Beatty. Once books appealed to a few people here and there, everywhere. They could afford to be different. The world was roomy. <clears throat> but the, when the world got full of eyes and elbows and mouths, double, triple, quadruple population, films and radios and magazines, books leveled down to a short, a sort of pace-putting norm. Do you follow me? I think so. Beatty peered at the smoke pattern he had just put out in the air. Picture it, 19th century man with his horse, dogs, carts, all in slow motion. And then in the 20th century, speed up your camera. Books should cut shorter, condensed. Digest, tabloids, everything boils down to a gag and snap ending. Snap ending, Mildred nodded like she understood it all. Classics cut to 15-minute radio shows, then cut again into two-minute book columns, winding up as a 10- or 12-line dictionary resume. I exaggerate, of course. The, the dictionaries were for reference, whose sole, but many whose sole knowledge of Hamlet, you know the old story, as I say of Hamlet, was a one-page digest, a book that was clamped down, now at last you can read all the classics, keep up with your neighbors. Do you see? So in other words, they made all these great, fantastic, good stories, basically nothing. You could read all of, of uh, Harry Potter in one afternoon, because it's now only about five to 10 pages. That's what they were doing to the great literature of society. They took, people, took babies out of the nursery, into the college and back to the nursery. There's your intellectual pattern for the past five centuries or more. So there we go. Hopefully that leads you enough to come together with your own answer of why we started burning books.